everybody. Welcome to the Superior Adventures Guild. I'm your humble dungeon master, Dave. And tonight I'm with some of my best buds here in the Dungeons and Dragons world playing Curse of Strahd. I'd like to uh, quickly introduce the crew here. In the uh, the upper right-hand corner, we've got Andy playing Corbin Brindall. He's a uh, paladin with a uh, an oath of vengeance uh, that's coming in into play here in the uh, in the session that we're in. Just below Andy, we've got Ben, and he's playing uh, Bjorn Ironhide, a relatively new uh, addition to the team after his previous uh, PC was killed by uh, the creeping hut. <laughs> in quite a battle. Uh, and next to Ben, we've got Shannon, who's playing Mara Brightwood, a half-elf cleric. No, human cleric? Human cleric, sorry. Human cleric, uh, and uh, which which is also coming into play pretty heavily in this particular encounter that we're gonna be jumping into. So uh, thanks guys for playing. It's great to have you back. I'm gonna jump into a quick recap here of what happened last time. So in the last episode, our heroes bid farewell to uh, two characters, Marzin and Stanley, both of whom were slain during the battle with Babala Saga and her creeping hut. Bloodied and beaten, but victorious in their fight, Mara and Corbin gathered their hard-won trophy, the Skull of Argenvostholt, and considered their next move as a group of witches started to gather on the shoreline. With the help of a stranger named Muriel, the remaining party members loaded their prize into a wagon and set off for Argenbos Holt, where they intended to lay the dragon's skull in its rightful resting place. During the journey along the old Sphalich Road, they were met by an additional stranger, as I mentioned, a dwarven fellow by the name of Bjorn Ironhide, who had been wandering the Valley of Barovia with some sort of an amnesia that clouded his memories uh, from his previous life. Determined to join Mar in Corbin's quest, Bjorn made himself comfortable around their fire. The next day, the four travelers arrived at the stronghold of Argenvost Holt, determined to honor Corbin's oath to return the skull and relight the beacon. However, this would prove to be no easy task. From the mists surrounding the mausoleum emerged a legion of revenants, led by none other than Vladimir Horngard, who himself had sworn an oath of vengeance against Corbin and his companions for an encounter that they'd had uh, previously. So without hesitation, Horngard and his once noble order of knights fell upon the party battle ensued, ghostly archers shooting arrows from atop the fortress, revenants pressing their attack. Taking quick action, Mara cast a wall of flame and cut the enemies in half, uh, while Bjorn cracked his knuckles, began his barbarian rage, and attacked. Corbin followed suit, casting protection from evil and good, and drawing the powerful sun sword. The fight waged on, and Mara was able to turn half of the undead host, while Bjorn and Corbin fought back Vladimir and his revenants. Mara was hit hard a few times, and Corbin cast a vow of enmity on Vladimir as the party began to cut down the fallen knights. And as we neared the end of the session, Mara blasted Horngard with three scorching rays while Bjorn unleashed a reckless attack. So now, with that said, we're going to jump back into, into the, uh, the fray here. So just to sort of remind everybody where we're at, we are outside the mausoleum, uh, inside the perimeter of the cemetery at Argenvost Holt, and we are at the top of the order with Vladimir Horngard um, ready to attack here. So let's see, he is going to take a couple of swings at the person, let's see, the Bjorn, who's right in front of him. And I believe because of the reckless, correct me if I'm wrong, Bjorn, that's going to be with advantage, correct? Yep, he'll have a advantage on me. Okay, so... Dave, can you can you ping um, Horngard for me? Yeah, so he's the one that has the uh, the hand okay. token, because that he has the Vow of Enmity, and that's what we use for the Vow of Enmity. Corbin, I think that little flame icon, is that because you're concentrating on protection from evil and good, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, all right, cool. All right, so Horngard's gonna take. I'm just take... gonna make my. I'll make my match bigger. Okay, uh, Horngard's gonna take a couple swings at Bjorn. With advantage, of course, I rolled a natural twenty. Right off the bat, um, 
39 slashing damage. Now you are raging, so that's halved. That's still a, a huge blast. And he's going to take another swing. Uh, this time it's only a 19, so I think that misses, doesn't it? Yep, that misses. Okay. Um, the half damage, is that round up to 20, or is that going to be 19? Uh, that would be 19. And uh, do me a favor and make sure you guys update your tokens with your hit point changes. That way people who are watching can kind of see how where you guys are at. Uh, all right, so that's Horn Guard. Let's see. Yep, that's the end of his turn. That brings us to Corbin. All right, um, I'm gonna attack this guy directly to my south. Okay. Still using the sun sword. Okay. Which is radiant damage. Yep. Okay. Uh, yes, that will hit. For 12 Radiant. Yep. Okay. He is looking pretty hurt. Okay, I'm going to use my extra attack. All right. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that's a big one. So, yeah, you just carve down through him for another 18, and he staggers a little bit in place, but he kind of looks at you with his eyes glowing red and, and just... Uh, he starts to get ready to attack you. All right. <laughs> That's it for me then. Okay. That brings us up uh, to the Phantom Warriors with the longbows. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know if any of you are watching this at all. Well, let's do this. Everybody roll a quick perception check for me. You're, you would be the only person who would see this, but um, you watch as the, the spectral warriors in the window disappear from view. Boop. And that is their turn. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. They disappear. Yep. Uh, brings us to Revenant, the one that's right next to you. Uh, Corbin, he is going to follow suit and attack you. Okay. Just a straight roll. Oh, no, he has disadvantage because you have the protection. That's so, right. Oh, yeah. First attack. First attack, he's actually going to try to punch you because <laughs> he's had a... He's had enough of this missing all the time with his sword, so why not? Uh, 23. 23 hits, yes. Yeah, I rolled a 25 and a 23. He hits you for 13 bludgeoning. And I need okay. you to make a constitution save for concentration. 13, you said, bludgeoning? Uh, it was 13 bludgeoning, yep. Oops. Sorry. And I need you to make a concentration save. A uh, constitution? Yes. Okay. And this is to maintain the spell. Um, let's see. Oh, okay, never mind. I was just reading over my... Oh yeah, you're fine. You you maintain the concentration as he swings with his with his fist a second time. 
since he succeeded the first. Let's see if it does it again. No, 13. Yep, I rolled a 21 and a 13. So he misses with the second swing. And don't forget to update your token. Doing it now. All right, cool. Uh, let's see, that is his turn. Okay. Uh, that brings us to Bjorn, the barbarian. I'm uh, going to be raging and uh, just swinging my double, uh, my battle axe, two-handed at um, Vladimir. Okay. So, 22. Uh, 22 hits. Remind me why you have advantage, just because I forgot. Uh, reckless, reckless oh, attack. Oh, yeah, yeah. Got it. Yep. Yeah, that so hits. I, I guess I would be... Um, so that's going to be 9 damage, or uh, 11. 11 damage, all right. He uh, he takes it, and he just kind of looks down and then turns and kind of just glares at you. All right. Well, he's going to take it one more time because I'm going to swing again okay. for extra attack. Aw, oh, man. <laughs> uh, that one misses. He bashes it out of the way with his, with his great sword. All right. Um... That's all I'm going to do. That's okay. all in my turn. Brings us to Muriel. She is out of arrows. She was swinging with her long sword, if I recall. Her short sword, excuse me. So she'll continue to do that on this revenant in front of her. And she does have two attacks. Short sword number one. Yeah. Why is it adding nice. two? Oh, it shouldn't be adding that two. So just 17. Uh, that still hits. Nice job, Muriel. And second attack. Nice. Yeah. With the second swing, she she hews through this undead body of this creature, and she cuts it in half, and he falls to the ground, dead, once again, for the second or third time. <laughs> Such is the life of the uh, of the revenant. Uh, okay, that's her turn. She's like, "Oh my god, I did it!" Uh, brings us to now. I would be a terrible dungeon master if I didn't admit my mistakes, right? <laughs> yeah. And I <laughs> I failed you guys during the last game because. I did not read the stat block of these revenants close enough, and they have an immunity to being turned by undead. So, oh. so Ooh. once once they real oh. once they realize that, because they, <laughs> they're like, hey, wait a minute, we can't be turned by undead. They are going to start start marching back towards you. No, oh, brother. Oh crap. Yeah, I thought that was funny when I was getting prepared. I was like, "Oh, yeah, duh." Yeah, I don't. I don't think that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I want him to stay turned. I know. <laughs> oh, you you see them? them? Yeah, you see them emerge from oh, wherever they were hiding from you. Let me get rid of these little lovey dovey hearts. They're not happy. Uh, as a reaction, you guys see Bjorn just kind of muscles starting to tense up even more, just kind of preparing for for these guys to come in. It is Mara's turn. Okay, um, I guess I'm going to have to bust something else out than I, since she wiped out that other guy. All right, I'm going to uh, I'm going to I'm going to do burning hands on these on these. I'm going to make my cone so that it. Hopefully we'll catch all these guys. I think it will. Okay. Um, my my cone of cone of fire. So I'll reach my my hands out and my thumbs together, and I'm gonna look at them all and just with the burning hands. So a 15 foot cone. You're, you just to because I want to help you oh, out wait. here. Um, Sorry. Range is 15 feet. Oh, so that's 15 from her. Correct. Orange. Correct. Cast it on it's, a spot. It's from her hands. 
from my okay. hand. Yep. So you could get closer and do it. Um. Or change my tune. You could change your tune. I'd let, I'll let you do that. You're you're really awesome and kind to allow me to do that. Well, we all make mistakes. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, going to uh, try something different then. How about that? Yeah. I think so. Uh, yeah. let's. I'll do a guiding bolt on the one that's closest to me. This guy go. right here. <clears throat> There we go. Yeah, that'll hit for 14 nice. radiant damage. You bet. You blast him with radiant energy. Anything else you want to do? That's all I've got. Okay. At this moment in time. Well, that brings all us, I'm allowed. Brings us back to Vladimir again, then, doesn't it? Okay, okay. Um, yeah, he's gonna he's gonna swing with his greatsword at you again, Bjorn. And he's gonna have advantage, isn't he? Because you wreck you're still reckless. Yep. That's gonna miss though, sixteen. And his second yep, swing. Misses. Yep, he's gonna swing again. Uh, that's 27 for 11 yep, slash, 11 slashing this time. So half that to five. Gotta love being a right. raging barbarian for all that good resistance. Uh, Corbin, back to you, sir. Okay. Uh, you, you see these guys marching towards you. And you also see Vladimir who doesn't. He doesn't look that worse for the wear, to be honest. He he looks he looks like he's having a good time. Yeah. Um trying to figure out if I want to move. Well, there's no, there are, you're not engaged with any combatants, so there won't be any attacks of opportunity or anything like that. Um, yeah. Just keep in mind you are concentrating on the spell. All right. I'll, I'll move down here and I'm going to attack Vladimir. Okay. With advantage because you have the vow. Yes. Okay. One minute, just checking one thing here. Yeah, okay. There we go. Yeah, that'll do. Uh, 28 to hit. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add a total smite. Of 16. Okay. I'm, I'm going to add smite to that. All right. I add a level two. Okay. Undead. Oh, second two shouldn't be in there. Sorry. I keep forgetting to turn that off. So it's just the uh... eight and the 15 radiant damage. Wow. Those so 20. Twenty-three. Three. Yeah, an additional twenty-three on top of yeah, that. Yeah, that hurt two, him. Two, you two. you blast him with your sword and channel the divine energy into him, and he just cries out in pain. <laughs> you see for the first moment that he looks like he's been injured severely. Okay. Nice shot. Um You gonna do it again? You got that. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna do it again. All right. Uh, 
Oh, <laughs> wow. All right. So that's and another so, 19 damage. Uh, so yeah, 19 damage. And then I'm going to add another smite to that. Yeah. Um, just at a level one oh, this time. Oh, boy. That's some, those are some big hits. you got to love these paladins. Additional 10 radiant. <laughs> wow. Does nice. that get doubled, too, because of the crit? Uh, no, just the original All crit. All dice? Just the original crit. Okay. Nice shot. Yeah, he's he uh he took that was huge. That was a big round. He's he's hurting. He's scorched and singed and f parts of his flesh are like hanging loose. Great. <laughs> Corbin's pissed. Nicely done, Corbin. I'm just gonna say stay dead this time. <laughs> I already killed him once. I'm not dead yet. <laughs> Actually I am dead. I'm undead. All right, anything else, Corbin? Uh, no, that's it. Okay, brings us to the Phantom Archers. Not about those guys. You see them as they just walk through the wall into the courtyard. They start coming towards you as well. Come on, guys. I just queued you. There you go. All right. That's them. And Bjorn, back to you. You just watched as this, this revenant general in front of you just took massive amounts of damage from Corbin. Um, I'm going to start moving my position, so I'm going to um, move 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Okay. Um, I am not going to reckless attack this time, and I'm just going to do a normal attack on uh, Vladimir. Okay. So swinging two-handed. Sorry, it's still an advantage. That's right. 20, One on the right. 24 or hits. Left, I mean. Yeah, that'll hit for six. All right, then second attack. Uh, that one misses. He dips right. out of the way as you swing with the second attack. All right, and uh, that's what I'll do. Okay. I'll end my yep. turn. Bjorn, you have a, a great axe? Or is it just a... a just oh, a shoot. Axe? Yeah, I do have advantage on it. Never mind, I'm flanking. So, could I roll a second one? Uh, oh, that second for that one. second swing, yeah, you can. Okay, hey. it, do it does hit, actually. <laughs> uh, for on the back swing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, nice. Two quick right, and shots from behind him. Right. Okay, brings us to Muriel. She is going to move forward 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And she is going to take a defensive stance. She's going to use the dodge action. That would be good for that. We'll go like that. She's dodging, which means that they'll have disadvantage on attacks against her next round. Uh, which brings us to these guys. So he's going to move up. And he's going to attack her, Muriel. Longsword, disadvantage. 13. Uh, what is her? Oh, that hits. Just hits. Damn. Okay, so she takes a massive blow. Ooh. Her AC is 13. Yep. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Uh, yeah, okay. Got to do some quick math there. He's going to swing at her again. Disadvantage. 
misses with an eight. She parries it with her short sword, but you see that she struggles as he comes down with his sword with a what was going to be a crushing blow, but she throws up her sword at the last minute and bashes it out of the way, but she kind of stumbles from his from the power of his swing. These other two fellas... Try to attack her. It's just going to be a straight roll. This is flanking. Uh, yep. 23 to hit. Shoot. Oh, God. Muriel. Okay. And then he's going to swing again. Or he's going to swing again on her. And she ducks out of the way at the last minute as the second blow comes down and hits the ground. And then this third guy's gonna move forward. Five, 10, 15, 20. And he's going to swing a few times at you, Bjorn, his long sword. Just a straight roll, 15 misses, second one. A 17, so you, you put up your, your hand axes and block both of the swings from this guy's sword, knocking him out of the way. That brings us to Mara. Okay, it's. I think it's time for me to bust out Radiance of the Dawn. Ooh. Sounds good. Sounds What's awesome. That <laughs> That's a, I'm, 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 chan I'm, ch I'm channeling Divinity and I'm, and I'm not, I don't know why it won't, I'm clicking on it and it won't pop over there. So let's try it this way. Are you clicking on the Here little with... bubble by the name? The little speech bubble by the name? There there we go. Yeah. Thanks, Andy. All right. <laughs> you present your holy symbol, <laughs> dispelling magical darkness. Any hostile creature within 30 feet has to make a con save. The creature takes radiant damage, half as much on a successful save. All right. All right, well, we'll start down here at the bottom with a con save. Awesome. Revenant con save. A seven. So that one, that's that guy misses or fails. He's gonna take full damage. Lose. Go ahead and Loser. roll, go ahead and roll your 2d10 for me. So we know what the damage is and I'll just take that off as we go here. Nice. So if, plus, plus your, your level, level, so it's a, uh, what do you guys, sixth? Oh, we're seven, uh, no, I think. Seven. Seven. Okay, so that's 20 damage. Oh, wow. Okay. Very nice. All right. All right, this next one. Eighteen. I think that's yeah, saved, he's, right? He's, so it's yeah, that's saved. Yeah, that's Half damage, so that's going to be uh, ten. See who else is one roll, there. one roll for all of them, or not, or separate rolls. One uh, roll for all of them. Uh, I mean, just for sake of, you can roll if you want to. I was just going to use all the right. same roll. It's up to you. No, go ahead. Uh, and then the third guy here, a sixteen. Yeah, it's, he's he's all right. Okay, so he's safe. So he takes ten as well. And then was it 30 feet? Yeah, 30 Vladimir. feet. Vladimir. Vladimir, let's get him in there. Yeah. Yeah, they're all within 30 feet, except for the guys running in yeah. from the back. Vladimir failed, five. So he's gonna take a full 20. Nice. Awesome. He's he's the one I really, really wanted. <laughs> yeah, he is, he is in rough shape right now. Uh, anything else, nice Mara? That was great. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, I think I'm I'm going to uh, I'm gonna I'm going to stay put. Okay. So think about it yeah. this way: like yeah. these these revenants come swooping in to attack you as their leader is being cut down, and these two are standing over Muriel trying to hack at her, and she's able to she takes a few blows, blocks a few. Mara comes up 
puts out her shield, presents her 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 holy symbol, and this blast of radiant light just flies across the battlefield like a gust of wind and just rips through these revenants and destroys parts of them as it just falls to dust. And so the rest of you just kind of are bathed in this bright light, which is pretty cool. I love that. Uh, Vladimir kind of recovering. Uh, he looks at you, Corbin, and he says, I cannot let you free, Strahd. And he's going to swing at you with his great sword. A couple times here with disadvantage. 24 on the first swing for 20 That's slashing damage. With disadvantage? Mm-hmm. I rolled a 24 and a 26. So how much how much damage was that? Uh, 20. And wow. then I need you to make a constitution save. Twenty. Twenty damage, you said? Yes, sir. Slashing, yep. That's pretty good. It says in the notes that if he if he hits against Str if he attacks Strahd and hits him, he does an additional four D six on top of that, which is pretty sweet. Well Yeah. Anyways. Okay. Uh, so yeah, roll a, roll a concentration save for me. Yeah, you're fine, and you're okay. you're strong at that for sure. Uh, he is going to swing again though. With disadvantage. And the second one misses. You bash it out of the way with the sun sword. Ooh, yeah. Uh, and it's your turn, Corbin. Okay. Let me just. Okay. What do you got? Uh, I'm trying to decide what to do. If I take an action, I can't use my extra attack, right? Correct. You can only use That's the extra attack if you take the attack action. Right. Um, let me check one other thing. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. All right. I'm going to attack him right back. Okay. I'm going to go for it. Yeah, do it. Um, you have advantage. 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 Here we go. Fancy. Nineteen. Uh, that hits. Oh, that should be plus two for my fighting style. Okay, so eleven total. Yeah. Got it. And nice. I will add a divine smite to that. Yep. At second level. For six additional? So additional 16, yeah. Okay. 10, uh, 16 16 additional. total, got it. Okay. Yeah. And I'm going to do it again. Okay. Keeping track of stuff here. Hold on. All right. Suspense. It's killing me. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yes, yes. Nice. So an additional Plus, uh, 16 damage. Yep. So you cut through him with the first the first swing of the sun sword. It just like cuts right through his chest. Pieces of his of his armor fall to the ground and he kind of looks at you with his eyes wide and you come around with a second swing and you cut right through him and you cut right across his upper chest and his head 
gets severed from his body and it falls down on the ground and lands right in front of uh, Bjorn's feet. And he is <laughs> dead again. Yes. Feels like the first time. <laughs> uh, and uh, okay. let's see who has. Where's, where we go past perception. So Mara, you also see at that same moment that these two phantom warriors that had walked through the wall, they also disappear. However, the three revenants that are still on the battlefield are still on the battlefield. Ah, oh, curses. Um. I'm just going to use some movement and um, back up a little bit because I need to prepare for the next round real quick. Um, don't worry, VR, and I'll be back. <laughs> I'm just going to move back this way. I got I to gotta, I gotta take a breather. <laughs> Coward! <laughs> <You're kidding. laughs> if I get hit by too many of those guys, I'm going down. I need to heal myself. All right. That's you, it. That's my You guys are all a little, looking a little rough. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mara, you're at like seven hit points. Really? You're yeah. that low? Uh, Bjorn. Yeah. Yeah. You look, uh, Corbin, you look over at Mara and she's barely keeping it together. She's got multiple spectral arrow. Well, actually, the spectral arrows probably uh, disappeared at this point, but she's got all these puncture wounds in her chest and her shoulders where there used to be arrows and there's just blood seeping out everywhere. She's, yeah, she's hurting. Okay. Uh, Bjorn, right. it's your turn. Uh, didn't Vladimir, did he have like a, uh, battle axe? Is that what he, he had? A, a he had a great sword. He had a great sword. A great sword? Mm-hmm. Um. Uh. I'll just say, I'll, I'm going to move up to, um, five feet to right here. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to use a attack action to shove this guy. Okay. Um, I'm basically trying to throw him away from... Um, keep forgetting her name. From, Mur Muriel? Can you help me out with her name again? Muriel. Muriel. Muriel, yep. So I'm just basically using an attack action to shove this guy after him. Okay. Uh, I am raging still, so I got to advantage on strength base is that just going to be athletics or straight strength uh let's see here you, it's a you it's also a have strength him it's a strength um it's a strength attack strength based attack all right so just a uh, normal yep i'll well you you would have advantage right okay yeah yep uh 16 does hit so there's you can either with the shove attacks are kind of funky, but you can either uh, push it away from you, or ha or knock it prone. Those are like the two options, depending on what you're trying to do. I'll I'll knock him. I'll knock him prone. Okay. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna give him the. Then, my, uh, I'm gonna give him the my back hurts token. Oh my back! Could I? Could I use uh, my? Extra attack to swing my battle axe at him now. Um, yeah, it's an attack. Uh, hold on, let me see here. It is a. Yeah, it's an attack. I think shoving. Yep, it's All an right. attack. So go ahead. So. And you have uh, and you have a double have advantage. advantage. Just right? kidding. You, you already had advantage. <laughs> yeah, that'll nice. hit. That hits big time. Big time for eleven. So eleven. Okay. Yep. Then um. Yeah, that's all I'll do okay. in my turn. All right. Muriel is on the ground, and she sees she sees the revenant above her fall to the ground, and she attacks it instinctively with her short sword. Because she's going to have advantage, some right? advantage. Correct. Yeah. Uh, 19 hits. damage oh nice and she will do the same thing uh 
12, however, misses. That's her turn. Now it's the Revenant's turn. So this one here to the south of her is going to attack Muriel. Boy, Muriel, hang in there. He's gonna try to punch her first. I am so sorry, Muriel, but I just rolled a natural 20. Ah. Uh, ooh, 14 bludgeoning. You watch as Muriel takes a massive punch to the head. And she staggers a bit. And it looks like she's about to fall over. And that's when he brings down the long sword in an arcing motion. And somehow misses with the, with a nine. Cool. <laughs> oh. So he misses. Oh. Uh, the guy on the ground is going to, well, use half his movement to get up. And then he is going to attack uh, Bjorn, who shoved him. First with a punch. Uh, 13, I believe that misses. I know it misses, actually. And a 17 also misses. So he tries to punch you twice and misses you both times. You, you duck out of the way. Mara. Okay, I, I'm, I'm. You said I'm hurt and I'm kind of staggering, so I'm just leaning on my all, all, on all my, you know, my divine energy, my divine spirits, and I'm gonna call up my spirit guardians now. Mm -hmm. I was wondering. What time to happen. time to bring them in. Bring them into action here. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, let's see if I can do this. It's a 15 foot to a distance, so it's a 15 foot radius circle. Oh, that's not what I wanted. No, that's not what I wanted. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is the Alt key is the one you want to use for that. I don't know if that's exactly right, Mara. No, it's a little short, I think. It's a little short. That's uh, I don't know if you can see the arrow the arrow I'm making. Yep. Let me uh let me see if I can. It should be like one five foot. Basically basically Corbin and I are in it and Muriel is just outside of it. Bjorn is just outside of it. A little bit more. There we go. Yeah, that looks about right. That's about right. That's about right. Okay. Awesome. So if they start their turn or move into it, they take 3d8, correct? Correct. Okay, got it. So you, you pop up and remind us all what your spirit guardians look like, Mara. They're, they're, they're little foxes running in a circle around up above they're they're just like kind of like orange but but shiny like like they glow right and they're and they're chasing each other's tails just kind of running around in a big circle around yeah. so that we can all we can all see them running around and at first glance they look oh so cute and cuddly but when you look closer they have these enormous fangs and radiant energy just seeping and crackling off their skin and fur I love it. Okay, cool. And, um, and, and sparks, sparks, that, sparks that run down, like as they're running sparks. along, like as if they're like touching ground, like every time they touch ground, like the ground in the air, there's like little sparks fly down. I love it. All right, so that's your action. You cast a spell for your action. Is there anything else that you would like to do? You know, hang tight. Uh, can I right do there? a healing word as a bonus? Well, can I do a healing word as a bonus action? No, because you already cast a spell. You can't okay. you can't do two two spells then, at the same time. In the same round, sorry. All right. Then, Unless it's a cantrip. Yeah, no, that's that. It is a cantrip. Uh, no wait, no, I take that not. back. I lied. I lied to you. I lied to you. I know, it's but not. I know. I, I know better. I know better. I caught. Yeah, you. I, I know you do because you're so smart. Oh well, no, I, I'm familiar with that one because I'm playing a cleric in, a, <laughs> in another game. So. Um, yep, that, that's it for me. Okay, got it. So you are concentrating as well. Mm-hmm. All right, got it. 
uh, Corbin, you've sort of backed um, off a little bit. What are you going to do back there? Mara, do you need healing right now? Or do you think you can make it another round? I, th I think I can make it. I think I can make it. Because then I can heal myself and just jump back in to the fight. Or Go. I can come heal you. Go All for right. it. All right, so I'm going to heal myself with using Lay on Hands. Okay. Um, I'll do that for 20. Okay, nice. Yeah. And is that a bonus action or is that an action? That's a full action. Got it. Okay. So that gets me back up to this. Nice. Okay, and I'm just going to go. <laughs> Especially for a cleric. Your healer. <laughs> I, uh, I got this. Go ahead. I got this. No problem. And I'm going to move down here. Okay. And that's it. That's my full movement and my action. All right. Bjorn, back to you. Um, I'm going to swing again at this uh, guy that's right here. Okay. You have advantage. Um, with my battle axe. Yes, sir. That hits. To hit. Yep. That hits for 14. Yep. Got it. Okay. Uh, and then swinging at him one more time for an extra attack. Nice. Hit me, baby, one more time. Uh, that oh hits for 12 more. 26 right. damage. Nice. That ain't bad. Nice. Okay, anything else? Um, that's all I'm going to do. All right. Muriel. Uh, my turn. Muriel, Muriel, Muriel. She is going to disengage. She's going to take the disengage action. She's going to try to get the hell out of there. So she's going to kind of move past you, Corbin. That's fine. I'm and gonna... she's going to get into the the circle of the circle of love over here. They do not get an attack of opportunity. And she gets out of there. Uh, that brings us to the revenants. So the one on the at the top of the grouping is going to move in and corner you a little bit, Bjorn. It's going to try to punch you first with advantage. Uh, 25 for 12 bludgeoning. Half. Right, take all. Yep. 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 Take, so take six, six damage. And then a long sword attack. Follow that up. Uh, 11 misses. So you just knock it, knock the sword out of the air as you take the first one on the on the chin. Uh, the one, however, to the south of you is going to attack as well. With two long sword attacks. First one. Uh, 16 misses. Second one. 14 misses. Oof. That's pretty freaking lucky. Yeah, they're scared. Swinging yep. scared. Swinging scared. Uh, the one to the south is going to attack Corbin. First attack with disadvantage. Oops. Here we go. 18. Uh, that just hits. That's my armor class. Uh, 25 slashing damage. <laughs> Second attack. He arcs around with his sword coming back down, and you see it coming ahead of time, and you knock it out of the air with your sword, and he misses with a 12 or a six, excuse me. <clears throat> uh, brings us back to Mara. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna move forward here a little bit. Oops, sorry, I gotta get back into my other. There we go. And so that my my circle encloses hopefully everybody. Then at that point, uh, it Not looks like time, but... it looks like Bjorn is just outside of it. All right, I'm I'm trying to. Yeah, I can't be there. Oh, I'd be. Can I be there? 
yes you can and that would get him in the circle yep so all three of you are in the circle as well as this guy right here yep And I'm I'm concentrating, so I'm not going to try to throw any more spells because I want to see if I can nail these guys with just my spirit guardians. Okay, sounds good. Brings us to Corbin. Ah, oh, keep getting whacked. It's, it's a good thing you healed, though. <laughs> You'd yeah. be out. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um. We'll go, right. we'll go through one more round of combat and get back up to the top again, and then we'll take a quick break. Uh, I think I'm, geez, I think I'm going to try to, I'm going to heal myself again. Okay. Um, let me see. Where are those guys? Where do they go? Um, Dave, just looking at these two guys on either side of me, can I tell which one looks the worst for wear? Um, Cause they both, right? They both look pretty rough to be honest with you. It's hard okay. to, it's hard to tell, but they, they both taken some licks. That's for sure. All right. Uh, this one to my South, I'm going to attack him. So I'm going to, I need to increase your, uh, circle a little bit, Mara. I hope you don't mind. Uh, yeah, it is a little short. This circle. Yeah, it is a little short. Uh, yeah, you're you you've extended it. Well, actually, uh, the dude that uh, well, I think all Corbin's three, about all to three swing of them at, are in it right now, from what I can see. Yeah, they are. Uh, yeah, yep. they should all be in it. Yep. Okay, go ahead, Corbin. What are we gonna do? Um, I'm going to attack the one to the south of me. Great. I don't have advantage on these, right? No. Yeah, that's right. Okay. No more vow of enmity. That's right. That's why I had that. Um, you know what though? Do me a favor, and um, you took a blast last time. I do need a concentration. Oh, that's save. right. Forgot that's to do right. that. So why don't you go ahead and roll yep. that right now? That was a twenty-five. So. 25 damage is what you took. Yeah. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Go ahead and attack. Okay. Ooh, 11. Hey, I have an inspiration die from a long time ago from you. Can I use that? No. On my attack roll? Uh, it was from me? Yeah. Yeah, you can use it. I thought you like said it was mean? from uh, from the bard. No, it was um, a DM gifted inspiration. Yeah, go ahead. All right, what is that? You can re-roll the attack. Re-roll the attack, okay. Yep. All right, let's try it again. Fourteen? Uh, that one hits. Ooh, okay, I'm <laughs> going to add a divine smite to that. Yeah, that was a good use of, of inspiration. All right. Level one. Okay, cancel out that second two for dueling so another style. 12, so a total of 24 damage? Yeah. And a bunch of radiant. Okay, wow. Wow, that sun sword is amazing, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, that one takes and... some, some, heri some serious damage as you chop through it with your sword. Okay. Extra attack. Okay. Same guy. All right. Yeah, nice. you arc around for the second swing and just shear right through him for 12. Yeah, Oof, 12 yeah. radiant. He's not happy. He's, st he's yeah. still up. He's still up. Okay, oh, I'm going to use one more smite. And he's unhappy about it. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Without that extra two. Okay, so another 
or 14. Uh, for a total of... Yeah. Got it. All right. Uh, anything else, Corbin? Nope. All right. Bjorn. I was really hoping to have knocked him down with that. Yeah. Bjorn, you are uh, you're surrounded. Can I use a bonus action to pick up and don Vladimir, Vladimir's sword? You don't have to use a bonus action to do that. What you would have to do is you have a hand. Do you have two hand axes or just one? Um, I have... Three. I've been swinging a, 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 a big battle axe. Okay, so battle. what you'd have to do is you'd have to drop the battle axe to the ground. And then you can use your free action you. to grab the sword. All right. I'll do that. Would I be able to attack this round too? Yes. Yep. So you don't you don't lose any economy of action because you're just... If you wanted to like stow the axe, that would be your free action. And then you'd have to use a, a bonus action to or an action to pick up the sword, but because you're just going to drop it to the ground, that doesn't cost you anything to drop something. All right. All right. Um, I'll swing at this guy with Vladimir's Yep, and it's, it's, plus, it it's, special. it's plus two to hit and plus two damage. All right. Um, uh, let me... Do you need a great there... sword in your inventory? Here, let me yeah, do, I'm going to drop it on this. Can you drop it quicker than I? Sure. Great sword. Plus two. There you go. It's in your, uh, right. in your attack panel. Um, could I... Is this something where I can swing two-handed at him? Yeah. Yeah. Great swords, yeah, no. I believe. Um, it should have a two-handed option. Yeah, I think they're, they're, it's a versatile weapon. I just had the weapons open. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it is. Making it is. It's actually two. You have to use two hands. It is a two-handed yeah. weapon, so it's you can't you cannot right. use it single-handed. Well, all right. Well, that's easy enough. Nice. Um, uh, no advantage, though, right? Yeah, no advantage. Okay. I didn't declare. So a 14 um, yeah, still hits. Oh, uh, sweet. Yep. Which one were you attacking? Um, This guy still. Okay. So a total of 13. Yes. Slashing. Okay. Awesome. Uh, then second attack. Um. Did I reckless attack? Or is that too late to uh pop it in the declare it between pop it in the in the chat. Let me just take a quick peek at it, at what it yep. says, the way it's written. It has to be your first attack on the turn. Alright. Um then I'll just do a second attack on it. Okay. Uh, sorry, it's still set on. That's oh, okay. I guess that still is. Yeah, 26. That works. So another 13. So you just carve through him with this. You, you get this great sword in your hands, and you're just and it feels so well balanced, even though it's just this huge sword, especially being sort of a small statured demi human. And you just swing at it, and it just feels it feels good. And you hit twice, doing massive amounts of damage to this revenant. And he looks he looks right. at you with his eyes wide as you swing the second round as he realizes whose sword it is. That's right. I was about to pick up his head and start doing <laughs> improv <laughs> weapons against it, but <laughs> I was like, I gotta do That's something. Dark, to man. Damage here. That's dark, man. That's <laughs> dark. <laughs> Alright, uh that will be it ends my turn. Okay, that brings us to Muriel. Muriel, what do you have up your sleeves here? I don't think she has a whole lot. Um, let's see. She is going to cast Cure Wounds on herself. There we go. 1d8. Plus her spell casting. So 1d8 plus 
system. Okay. So she heals herself for... Oh, nice! For 11 points of damage. Or 11 points of healing. And... She is then going to turn around... not doing that I hit the wrong thing she's going that's all she's gonna do she's gonna hold there all right that brings us to the revenants now Mara your foxes start to tear through these guys pretty pretty bad since all three of them are within the circle what uh can you roll damage for me it is 3d8 3d8 yeah, yeah. and then they have to do I think they have to make a wisdom. saving throw yeah they have to make wisdom yeah. saves yeah. So we'll go from top to bottom. First one. A six fails. Middle one. 13. I think that Fail. fails too. And yep. a, one to the bottom. 10. So they all fail and take 16. Nice. Mark that down, do some accounting here. Nice job with that one. That guy to the south of me is still up. Yeah, he doesn't look good though. He's barely hanging <laughs> on. Dang, man. I did 50 points of damage to that guy last round. Yeah. And he is going Damn. to press his attack, moving in to flank you, Corbin. Well, he has disadvantage. So what does that do? Uh, he has disadvantage, and he has a flanking advantage, so it's just a straight roll. Uh, 19. For 12 yeah, that slashing, second attack. 14. I think that misses, right? That uh, misses. Yep, so he misses with the second attack. How much? Uh, you said it was 14 damage? 12. 12 damage. Yep. Okay, so that's... And then this guy here is going to attack you, Bjorn, with a punch again. He likes punching you. Uh, 12 misses. Uh, 26. For four, 26 14. Halved, so 7 bludgeoning damn with a punch yeah oh. yeah these guys are tough and then the one above right. you is going to do the same except he's going to take two swings with his long sword first swing natural one and the second swing nice. 11 so you're able to parry both of yeah. his blows and he misses and that brings us back to mara Yeah, I'm, I'm still concentrating, and I, I think I better stay put. Okay. No, just I don't, because you're... I don't want to... I don't wanna, I don't, yeah, I know. I just don't want to risk a, 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 a bad roll here. Okay. Just to make sure that you're aware, though, I will, I do... I want to just say that you, you can cast other spells. You just can't cast a spell that requires concentration. Otherwise, it will break the concentration that you have on the first spell. So just because you're concentrating doesn't mean you can't cast other spells. Just be aware of that. Okay, um, I'm I'm sorry. I, I thought that I'd have to I'd have to do uh, uh, another roll. Um, then I'm yeah. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a sacred flame down on this guy okay. right here. So that's a deck save. Fifteen, <clears throat> and I rolled a natural twenty on his deck save. So he takes oh. half, or no, he doesn't take any damage on a success. Yeah. Okay. All That's right. it. All right, that brings us to the top of the round. Let's do this. Let's take a quick break. 
and then we'll come back in uh, you know in 15 minutes let's say five till we'll see you then all right okay sounds good all right all right
let's jump back into it. We are at the top of the order, Corbin. It's your turn. What would you like to do? I would like to heal myself. How much more do you have? Uh, I have a couple different methods. Mm. You One still have lay on I'm... hands? Or have you used yeah. all that? No, I've used most of it, but not all of it. Um, I don't know if I'll survive another hit, so I think I better do it. Um, okay, so I'm going to use lay on hands for the rest of my 15 that I have. Okay. And that's an action, right? Yeah, that's a full action. Bjorn. I'm going to uh, swing my great sword at this guy still. Okay. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. Uh, and I'm going to do a reckless attack against him. Okay, so it's going to have advantage. Cheers. 23 hits for 11 total. Right, then second. Okay. Yep. Then second attack. Ooh, oh wow! Yep, that one misses. He uh, he parries the blow. Anything else? Um, I'm going to no. I'll stay put. I'll end my turn. Okay, that brings us to Muriel. Now Muriel is going to use a bonus action to cast Hunter's Mark. guy here the south of her so she is going to attack him then with her sword and if she hits she'll get to do some hunter's mark damage short sword Just a straight roll 19 she does not have advantage that hits, so she does a total of seven piercing. And she's gonna go ahead and attack again with her short sword. 14 also just hits, and she gets her hunter's mark damage as well. So nine, nine, wow. Plus five. Corbin, you watch as she comes in and she swings twice quickly and she cuts this guy down, the one that you softened nice. up, and he drops to the ground. Awesome. Yeah, that ain't bad. Sweet, uh, that is her turn. And I think, let's see. She needs a bonus action on her next turn. Okay, great. That's her turn. That brings us to these two fellas that are attacking Bjorn. The one to the north is going to continue to punch at you. Do they take um, damage first from the... Uh, yes, yeah, indeed they, they do. Them. Yes, thanks for the reminder. Go ahead and roll the damage for me, Mara, and I will roll the... Is it a wisdom save? I think it's a wisdom. Yeah, it's a wisdom save. Thank you. Uh, the one to the north. The Twelve. And fail. A fail, and the one to the south, 20, so he saves. So the one to the north takes 13. Nice. The one to the south will take six. Oof, yeah, he's looking pretty rough. Uh, the one to the south of Bjorn is, go or the one to the north of Bjorn, excuse me, is going to attack with uh, a couple of fist attacks. Mono e mono, uh, twenty three to hit for eleven bludgeoning, so half that to five. 
You got it. Second attack. 26 for 10, half to five. Yep, so 10 total. 10 total. And the one to the south of you is going to attack with longsword. First attack is a natural 20 for 20 God. slashing damage. Half of that to 10. All right. And second longsword attack. Uh, 23 for an additional 20. Oh, does 23 yep. hit you? Uh, yeah, it does. Okay, just barely. Uh, for 20 slashing, half to 10. Oh, man. Yep. Wow. So I've, I've now taken over 150 damage, so I'm, I'm going down. <laughs> Wait, you're out? Uh, yep. So I'm at zero. Okay. All right. So you guys watch as Bjorn drops to the ground. And both revenants turn their gaze oh, upon yeah. you. Uh, Mara, it is your turn. Um, I am going to uh, hit this this guy with. Let's see. Wait a minute. I I can go over the head of of Bjorn now that he's down, right? Yeah. Well, so, what depends on what um, you want to do. What are you What are you trying to do? I I want to do a uh, scorching ray, but I yeah. didn't. I yeah. couldn't go through Bjorn, but I can go over the top of him Correct. now. So, yep. Yep. Um, you you actually have clear I, shots at both of them either way, even if Bjorn was standing up, actually. So, yep. go ahead. So, oh, yeah, that's right, because uh, Vlad's down. So, all right. Uh, so, that is, let's see here. Where am I? Wrong page. That's where I am. So, Scorching Ray. Uh, and which targets are you are you attacking? Um, I'm, I, I'm, there, there are uh, three three rays. So yeah. I'm gonna hit. So I'm gonna hit this one once okay. and this one twice. Okay. So the one on the south is the first one that hits. Yeah. He takes nine fire damage. Okay. He's still up. Yeah. And then two roll for the next two. Let's see here. These guys aren't hard to hit, but they have a lot right? of hit points. Yeah. Sorry, hold on a second. I clicked on the wrong thing here. There we go. Oh no, you roll. You roll three or attack rolls. Want... Oh, sorry. Yep. Make a spell attack roll for each ray. I just did. It's there's kind of a pause. That's okay. Just wait for it. Don't hit. Keep hitting. There you go for an additional yeah, eight but damage. So. Yep, you hit you hit with this with all three of them. Nice shot. All right, uh, is that the end of your turn, Mara? That's the end of my turn. All right, Corbin. Right, I'm gonna. Uh, yeah. Well, I I don't get advantage if he's down on the ground, right? Uh, no. If Bjorn is down, no. Okay. Um. Well, let me think about this for a second. Okay. Um, I'm going to... Let me look at one thing. Ben, didn't you just create this character? Yeah, you know, I kind of figured it, we had a paladin and a cleric. <laughs> so I would probably get some healing every once in a while. Yeah, you know, don't. Like <laughs> you can't. You can't assume nothing. <laughs> I was just like, come on. It's yeah, okay. Right. I'm gonna step up here, and I'm. Hang gonna, there, dude. I'm gonna cast um. Healing, uh, cure wounds. On Bjorn. Okay. One moment. Yeah, I'm gonna cast it at second level. Nice. That's my last second level spell. Well placed. Come on. Ugh. So a total of seven. Ooh, yeah, those are bad. Those are terrible rolls. Roll. Yeah, both I of them know. were. You rolled ones on both of them. 
Uh, but it, n- nevertheless, uh, seven hit points, and Bjorn, you come to you come to consciousness, <gasps> and above you are standing these two revenants. Anything else, Corbin? Um, hold on, I'm just gonna make note of all that. Um, let's see, that was an action. Um, no, I'm just gonna move, after that, I'm just gonna move back down. Sorry, here. And that's it. Okay. All right, Bjorn. It's your turn, my um, friend. Going down... Actually, Do I have to sorry. Bring... Can I just can I move here? You can. My bad. Yep. Okay. Does going down cancel my rage at all? Do I have to re rage? Uh, yes. All right. Oh yeah. Be cautious. All right, so I'm going to rage. Okay. Bonus action. Got it. Then. I'm just going to reckless attack this guy since he's got an advantage on me anyways. Which one are you attacking? This guy right here. You okay. have advantage. You already you do already have advantage because he's flanked. FYI. So you oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. don't necessarily need to Never use mind. reckless. Yeah, you don't want yeah. to. Well, so it'll put you at a different advantage. advantage on me too. Yeah, That's true. <laughs> uh, 23 does hit, and this is the one to the south of you. Yeah, you cut through him with the uh, with the great axe that you picked up off of Vladimir, and you swing heavy and just rip right through this guy and cut him in half at the chest, and he topples backwards and he dies. All right, I'll continue that swing, that momentum, mm-hmm. and uh, extra to attack this guy right here. Okay. Um, doesn't have advantage on that one, but you didn't need it. Yeah. (laughs) Nice. For 11 slashing damage. All right. Got it. Okay. Nice, Bjorn. Anything else, Bjorn? Um, I will use half my movement to stand up now. Okay. I guess laying down like a, like a. Oh, really? (laughs) If, so if you were prone, yeah, you would have know. you would have had disadvantage. I didn't realize that. So you would I have. Right. Um, luckily, you still hit for with both of them because their armor class is thirteen. <laughs> but uh, just know that if you're prone, oh wow, you have disadvantage on attacks if you're prone. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, so then you stand up. Got it. That brings us to Muriel. She is going to. Gonna move forward, or actually, she's gonna use a bonus action to transfer her hunter's mark to the last revenant over here, and then she's gonna move five, ten, fifteen, and she's going to attack him with her short sword. And if she hits, she gets to do hunter's mark damage. First attack. Nice. nice. 23 plus Hunter's Mark, which is a D. Oh, I have it right here. She does seven. And then she's going to do it all again. And she hits. And Hunter's Mark. An additional 12. Not bad, Muriel. Not nice. bad at all. All right, Mara, roll roll your spirit guardian damage for me because it's the revenant's turn. And it is a wisdom save. Nice. Uh, that's a successful save, so it takes half Ooh. damage. Uh, so that's going to be nine damage. Still pretty substantial. The Revenant. Let's see. Okay. 
The Revenant is going to... The Revenant is going to attack Muriel, who just attacked him. Longsword. Muriel goes down. I just rolled a natural oh. 20 for 30 points of damage. Oh, God. Holy cow. Muriel is at zero. She drops to the ground. I'm going to give her a little uh, unconscious tag. No, not that one. We'll go. Ooh, this one. And then with a the second attack at Bjorn. Just a straight roll. 17, I believe, misses as you bash the sword out of the way with your great sword. And then with movement, it is going to move 5, 10, and get out of that, that circle, but stay engaged with Bjorn. Mara. Oh, and this hunter's okay, I'm... goes away too, sorry. No more hunters. All right, first thing I'm going to do is, is move forward Okay. so that he's back in the circle. Got it. And then I'm going to hit him with a sacred flame. Okay, so that is a deck save. And he fails. Wow, nice. So he takes 10 radiant. That's pretty substantial. Nice shot. Anything else, Mara? Uh, no, that's it. Okay. Oh, wait. No, I can't do a... Uh, no. Nope, that's it. All right, Corbin. All right, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, and attack the... Last dirt bag left standing. Okay. <laughs> All right. With advantage. Here we go. Twenty-seven. Yeah, that'll hit for twelve. Twelve. Okay. Yep. Nice, nice. And I'll do it again. Yes. Ooh, nice. Some that's serious natural 20. Nice. Yeah, I was just about to say, that's a Holy lot. Holy crap. So that's uh 20? Yeah. Yeah, he looks like he's ready to go down, but he's still up. Anything else, Corbin? Nope, that's what I got. All right, Bjorn. This guy's a bad to... practice being dead, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. at him. Yep, that's all. It, that's all it takes. With one uh, final yeah. swing, you knock down the last of the oh. standing revenants, and you look around on the battlefield, and it's quiet. It's quiet. Um, we are now out of initiative. So let's get rid of this. Could I check Vladimir just to see if he has like keys or anything on him? Just kind of expect sure. his body. Yeah, roll an investigation check. Dude, that was a sweet sword you got off him. I know. That's a, I, was, I wasn't going to swing yeah. at it. Then I was like, no, what, dude, I'll just pick it up. Just that, was that was a good idea. That was really nice. Yeah, thanks. Nicely done. You Nine. you kneel down and and uh, kind of steady yourself as you as you drop to a knee because you've lost a lot of blood and you're you're hurt and you you were knocked down once and you start to sort of dig through Vladimir's uh, clothing and the armor and you don't find anything. You you do see that he is a rotting corpse of a revenant, his body having probably risen from the, some grave in Barovia, not not too long in the pa in the distant past uh that doesn't make sense but not too far in the past um <laughs> and he uh he doesn't have anything on him whatsoever other than what he had the sword and the armor maybe maybe he crawled out of one <laughs> he 
sparks from, hey guys. The, from the dead. <laughs> Hounds of hell. Hey guys, let's yep, get sorry. this. Let's let's get this skull inside the crypt. Let's go. Yeah. What's well? Can anybody? I can heal Muriel a little bit. I. You yeah, know Mur what? Muriel um, actually. You know what? Muriel has to make a death save, so she's gonna do that. Actually, actually, can I do a can I do a, a spare the dying on her? Yeah, I'm gonna do a death save first, so she saves. Amazing. But yeah, you you can uh, you can do a spare the dying on her. So you use a cantrip to heal her. Is yep. it safe to say that you drop your uh, spirit guardians? Uh, how yeah. Okay. How long does it last anyway? Not long enough to really matter anymore. Yeah. So all right, so she yeah. is stabilized, but she is unconscious. She's at she's at zero. She's yeah, at zero. she's at zero. Yep. Do you want to do anything did, uh, else with did her? Did Vladimir? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was, I was asking if Vladimir had like some type of sheath or something for this great axe, or did he? Uh, yeah. There's or, a uh, sheath. The great has, sword. Yeah, he has a sheath for the great sword. All right. All I wanted to do was kind of grab that and grab my shield that I dropped. And then uh, the battle axe, too. Okay, so you gather your things. Is, um, is anybody yep. going to heal Muriel? Or do you want uh, She's unconscious right now. I have... Well. Corbin, Corbin, let's let's put our heads together on this. I've got one level one spell. Um, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I could carry her if you guys need to, because uh, I'm only down to seven HP too. So I don't know how much how much magic yeah, you I've guys got, have I've left got, in you. I don't. I I've got. I well, I could do spare the dying all day long, but as far as actual healing, I've got one. Um, I've got one healing word, and I'm down to seven. And I'm trying to decide where I need to lay that last healing word. That's all I've got left. Right. I have one level one spell left, so I could cure wounds on her, um, but that would that would wipe me out for spells for the day, so I couldn't. Yeah. Um, I could still. I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. Do you, if I I could probably carry her and we could go through. I just feel okay. like if, if say, there's say something use in it, there though, <laughs> that's what I'm worried about. Oop, did we lose somebody? Yeah, that's but, what I'm worried about too. I don't think so. Dave, you there still? We we left we left Dave. We lost Dave. No, I'm still here. Oh, weird. That was weird. I think Groovy oh. crashed. Where'd Groovy yeah, go? Yeah, Groovy yeah. crashed. That's where. My my camera's frozen too. This happened earlier. Not not so not so Groovy. Yeah. Yep. So what I'm worried about is. Yeah, let's hold hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. Let's get this squared away. All right, so go ahead, Ben. Go ahead, Bjorn. Yeah, what I'm afraid of is if if we heal her, we just we only have what two spells left, is what you guys sound like, right? Yeah. So I've, I've, I've do got we a... heal her. Here's the scenario: one, we we give her health, we give her six HP, and she goes up. We run into people, she get hit once, and she goes back down. Right. I mean. Or, Almost all of us are in that position, though. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Well, well, I'm saying is, you give I'm six not, HP but... to me, and I actually get twelve because I'm able to take double damage. Right. So, I don't know. I I know I've seen her cast magic before. I'm just saying, uh, check her stuff. Does she have like a healing potion or something? Or I'll, I'll, she's right next to me. I'll take a look. She doesn't have a healing potion. In fact, if you recall from the previous session in Berez, she oh, had yeah, walked she... out of the crowd uh, buck naked and oh, had, naked. And had taken right. clothes and uh, and gear from Marzen and Stanley. So she doesn't have right. anything on her other than a bow with no arrows, uh, some some clothing that she pulled off of you know Marzen and Stan. 
to cover herself, and a short sword. That's all she has. And well, and some of the some of the money that you shared with her, some of the gold that you shared with her, which amounts to yeah. nine gold pieces and twenty copper, and a gem. Okay, so we'll just. Did, well, does she heal um, any of you guys? No, she does not have that. Yeah, she did. She did. She did heal me. Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, it might be she might have spells then. That's. A, well, I'm just kind of weighing the options because it's like. Yeah. No, it's we're, it's worth we're talking really about. We're really critical right now. Yeah. It's just like, is it more important uh, to have four of us on our feet or three of us protecting one person that's like ambulatory? Yep. Like if if she's on her feet, we could all flee from something. But if she's laying down, right, we had to carry her. So I don't yeah. know. Just throw yeah, that out there. That's fine. I'll let you guys do figure out what you guys want to do, and I'll I'll go and grab this coal and start yeah. bringing it over here because we're we're bringing it into this okay. this place, right? I was just trying to just right. grab. No, some, yeah. it's good. Yeah, we should talk now. about that. Um. No, it's good to it's good to talk about it. So, if, if cure wounds does what versus what I've got here? Um, cure wounds is like one d eight plus my spell casting ability modifier, which, which is, is your charisma bonus. Whatever your charisma. So one d eight plus five. I can do one d eight plus five on her. And I can do one d four plus five. Why? Well. How about but with with healing word? Because I've got healing word. Okay. I'd say use a. Whoever's gonna use magic, whatever gives the less HP, give it to her. All right. Okay. And if you want we'll to save, right. we'll save heal yourself or hear me, and me. Yeah. You know. We'll we'll save the the higher one for if one of us gets hit. Yeah. Save uh, save yours, and then I'll I'll and I'll I'm... do healing word. On All right. So and go I'm... ahead and roll healing word, Mara. I'm at just under half strength right now, so I'm doing a little better than you guys. So she comes to consciousness with five hit points. <gasps> oh my god, am I alive? Oh, she looks up at the sky. No, it's, uh, it's, it's, it would be five plus, right? Uh, I'd already calculated oh, yeah. it for you. You you rolled a natural oh, one. Okay. All yeah. right. Oh, plus four. We, oh, no. Yeah. Did the same thing, Corbin, that's, earlier. That's right yeah, yeah. 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 So four. she comes to, and she looks up at you. Uh, meanwhile, Bjorn goes and, and grabs the skull and just pulls it up over his, pro like, probably carrying it up over your shoulders. You know, kind of, it's a huge skull, but you've got, you're tough, you're strong, you're a barbarian. And you get back, and with your foes vanquished, the four of you turn to the mausoleum. Tarnished, silver-plated gargoyles shaped like dragon wormlings cling to the stone-tiled roof. The eight-foot-tall, four-foot-wide white marble door in the southwest wall is engraved with the name Argenvost. Do you enter? Um, I'd like to just check the door, make sure there's nothing... You know, there was a trap on the front door of the place, I guess, so. Uh, yeah, Did roll I an investigation it? check. Okay. Not great at these, but I'm giving it a shot. Excuse me. 15. You, yeah, you're, this is not really your forte, necessarily, looking for traps or anything like that, but you're looking for anything weird. And you know enough that that there's strangeness that goes on in this place, but you examine this, this door and it is a very sturdy marble uh, door, beautifully polished white marble, but it doesn't appear to have any sort of trap mechanisms on it or embedded in the door frame or around the hinges or anything like that. Does it have a handle? Does it like open outwards or inwards? It opens outwards towards you. You'd pull it open. All right, so I'm going to pull it open, like, real cautiously and kind of, like, keep it between me and whatever is inside. Okay. Just, like, half hoping there's not spiders in there or something. <laughs> right. You open it up, and the interior of the mausoleum is dark and dusty, and you kind of cough a little bit as you, as you look inside, and the dust sort of is wafted out through the opening. 
What does Q16 mean? <laughs> yeah, don't worry yeah. about that. That doesn't mean anything. Okay. Um, so I don't, I don't see anything right away in there. Uh, do you go in? Um, yeah, sure. I'll step inside. Okay. As Just you enter, uh, you see four empty alcoves, one to the north, one to the south, one to the west, and one to the east with raised floors in each of them. And etched into the far wall is an exquisitely carved stone engraving that is written in some strange foreign language that you can't quite make out from this distance. And that would be right about here on this corner. Even though I Did have Did you dark step into it? Could I? Correct. Yeah, I'll step in. I'll move in closer. Could I step in too as well? Yeah, Muriel got up too, and she's gonna walk inside as well. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm in. Could I take a, a closer look at the, the stone? Yeah, absolutely. Make... What are you, what are you looking for? Um, you said it's written in another language, or I, I'm just trying to. Yeah, so there's on the far wall. The... So this right. this wall that Corbin is next to. There is a, a carved engraving. What uh, what languages um, do you speak? Um, dwarven and halfling and common. You can't. Okay. You can't read it. You can't read it. Right. Um, I've got uh, Dave. I've got common, dwarvish, elvish, and infernal. You do, It doesn't look familiar to you either. Okay. All right. I have um, common, draconic, elvish, and sylvan. Corbin, as you look closer, uh -huh. you start to recognize the script. And although you're, you're, you haven't seen this in a long time, you're able to read it. It is written in draconic. And it says, Here lie the bones of Argenvost, Lord of Argenvost Holt, founder of the Order of the Silver Dragon and protector of the people of Barovia. And you look down in front of you now, and in the dust and the cobwebs, and you see that there is a pile of bones, a sizable pile of bones, that are in each of the each of the <laughs> alcoves. Has a, has okay, bones stacked in them. Um, is there like a space somewhere? I need one. One of the alcoves, like where the yes, to to fit? the north there. It, the north alcove up here, there is sort of a uh, an opening in the middle. I'll, uh, I'm just going to drag it over. Yeah, I'm going to motion to Bjorn to. Bjorn, you move. I'll, uh, I'll you move start up. bringing. Yep. Just like heaving this skull behind me. Just. Okay. And you place the skull among the bones of Argenvost, and as you do, you feel this rumbling tremor beneath your feet, just shaking the mausoleum and the ground around you. And PKO. <laughs> the mausoleum, in, in the interior of the mausoleum flashes with this bright white green light, and you all are momentarily blinded by its brilliance. It's, it's warmth shining upon you and, and sort of enveloping you. It feels good. It doesn't hurt. It's just bright. And then the light itself, almost as if it's being pulled from the mausoleum, it gets pulled out the door back into uh, outside of the mausoleum. And now it's dark inside the mausoleum. And from outside, you can, or from inside the mausoleum, you can hear this, you can hear crumbling stone. Uh, and can you I, can also can I run after it. You guys, yeah. you guys run to the door and you look outside, and you see stones that are crumbling and falling from the spire above the stronghold, the tower of Argenvost. And in a moment, you see this eruption of light, this brilliant white light that shines straight up into the sky and illuminates the the um, all the mist and the in the fog of the valley. And uh, you also see now standing in the middle of the cemetery as this, this bright beam of light continues to pulse and shine up into the sky, 
you see this enormous dragon shimmering with bright <gasps> silver aura. Behind the creature, the column of light shining up from the tower, pulsing glows, almost as if it's like a lighthouse, like a beacon from a lighthouse. I'm just going to take a knee. You kneel down. Yeah. Muriel follows suit, watching you. She she also kneels down, not really knowing why, but she I'm, does. I'm going... I'm going to take a knee too and, 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 you know, lay my shield kind of on its side edge. I'll stand proud. <laughs> the four, the four of you. Out, just... You're probably just only that tall anyway. <laughs> yeah. You're still just about the same height as everybody else at this point, but you guys, the four of you look upon the dragon as it looks, turns its head and looks down upon you. Noble and powerful. The creature's mouth opens to reveal this, large toothy grin at first terrifying but also in a sense serene and calming to you its wings are held tightly against its back as it stands before you on thick muscular legs its spiny frill rising over its head and then running down its back from the eyes to the tip of its tail which is curled around in front of it you have honored your oath in doing so you have freed my soul from the mists. You have restored the virtue of the order, and you have given hope to the peoples of this land. Let your honor continue to guide you in your quest. You have much evil and temptation to face. Do not take lightly your position. Sir Brindle, he turns to you. For you are a noble knight, of the Order of the Silver Dragon. May you succeed where we failed. He turns his head and he calls to his knights. And you watch their bodies strewn around the cemetery. Suddenly, a shimmering green energy diffuses almost like wisps of campfire smoke through their undead eye sockets, appearing before you now all of the men, all of the soldiers, all of the knights in a tight military formation in front of the dragon. Free of anger and self-loathing, Vladimir Horngard and his men look upon you and you and you look at them and they are they're sort of shimmering, right? And they look young and vibrant and healthy and they look good and virtuous and clean, much different than what you've experienced. They look proud. They stand at attention before you, chest out, shoulders back, their arms fixed at their sides. Vladimir takes one step forward and speaks to you. Honorable adventures, Sir Brindle, Knight of the Order of the Silver Dragon. You have cleared the darkness from our eyes and our hearts. Your bravery brings a new day in Barovia. You've relit the beacon of Argenvost Holt, and you've shown us the way. We may now finally rest. Vladimir and his men, they bow gracefully to you. And as they rise up again, you watch as, almost as if they're pulled from the ground, their shimmering spirits sort of evaporate and being sucked up towards the energy of this huge beacon of light above the, the stronghold. It absorbs them and you watch as they just are shot up into the air as if being released from this place. Argenvost, watching this happen as well, turns to you and his head kind of comes down to your level. He's, he's big, he's huge, right? His head kind of comes down to the same level as the four of you, three of you on your knees and the dwarf standing. I too must join the light and be rid of this domain. My long rest has come. Thank you, champions of Barovia. And with that, Argenvos flaps his enormous leather wings. And he takes flight, circling now, flying up into the air, circling around the stronghold. And you watch him as he flaps, proud and free, 
eventually making his way, spiraling upwards until he flies into the beam of light, the beacon of light above the stronghold, and he too disappears into the mists above. It's quiet now. You still hear the, the pulse of this light. But all else is quiet. Is there is there any visible change to the mists? You, If you look above you and you look up into the beam of light, you can see that the mists are almost parted. And the light itself is reflecting off of the mists so that some of the light of the beacon reflects back down onto the land. You feel strangely energized. You feel as if you have gained something tangible through all of this. In the parlance of the game of Dungeons and Dragons, it would be a level. <laughs> but along with that, you also gain a buff. As long as the beacon of Argonvost shines, let me just make sure that I get this right. As long as the beacon of Argonvost shines, you also have a plus one to your armor class Ooh. and a plus one to your saving throws. Wow, nice. Yeah. You look over at Muriel and she has a tear in her eye and she wipes it away and she says, what we've done here is, is good. This is, this could change everything. She stands up from her kneeling position and, and looks at the three of you. What will you do now? Probably, mm. probably sleep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the first first order of business. We need business. to find a safe place to rest. Yes. Maybe we could just board up the crypt or something and sleep in the air. I don't know. <laughs> I was I was wondering the same thing. If there is a you know now that there aren't any revenants in the in the castle. I mean, we don't want to run across spiders. any there giant spiders, spiders. In there, though. I know, yeah. I know there's I know there's giant spiders, but uh, but you know, I like you. I'm I'm wondering if staying here would be a good thing um, because we know we've cleared out the revenants, or if it's a bad thing because we've drawn attention to the to the, to the place, uh, right. perhaps to Strahd. Right. Bjorn? I'm just ready to slay Strahd. So, <laughs> I look at might, Mural and I'm like, next we kill Strahd. Then, uh, you, might, you might need I'm, a, I'm for a little rest first. But... If you guys want to, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you guys, can, you guys can definitely take a rest here if you want to. If you want to try to hold up in one of the... You did some, ex I don't know if, well, it's certainly Bjorn wasn't here when you explored the Argonvost hold originally, but I think both Corbin and Mara were. So you have a little bit of an idea of the layout. Yeah. So yeah. you could, you could find a spot that's not spider infested to take a rest yeah. if you need to. There could we are... go back in here? What about just for Argonvost? Yeah, we could, we could go with that... the crypt, crypt and like tighten the doors shut if anybody, I don't know if I have those actually. <laughs> that might be my other game. Um, I'll just let I'll lay in front of the door. It, it, it pushed inward, right? Uh, the door open, opens open. outward. It opens yeah. outward. Yeah. I'll, I'll lay in front of the door still. Locking, <laughs> <laughs> lo lo <laughs> lo locking you guys in. <laughs> uh, I, I I'll be fine. I still a single point. So in. just a couple of take. a couple of quick notes for you guys. It's winter. It's cold. Yeah. Uh, so that's one thing. You're beaten and bloodied. Some of you went down during battle. You could certainly, if you want to stay in the crypt, you can. However, you do know, for example, that there's a room uh, yeah. just off of that's the chapel that actually has a fireplace in it. 
You would yeah, re you would definitely remember thinking. that. Why don't we do that? Yeah. We'll go in and just All make right. sure we secure whatever room we're in. And we'll, and we'll throw a fire in there. All right, lead the way then. All right, so for the sake of just sort of narrative, um, let me let me grab your token. So you guys are, you guys make your way into this room here. Would it be the kitchen? You're able to, uh, let's see, what did that say? I think that was the kitchen. 10, let me look it up. Yeah, I think you're, I think you're right. Yep, that's the kitchen. Corbin. So, um, it's been completely plundered, tables overturned, floor littered with rusted utensils, smashed crockery. Narrow wooden, uh, narrow windows flanking the hearth look out over a cemetery. Um, do there is an iron pot hanging from a hook inside the fireplace, and that's it. So you're able to get a fire going. Uh, Muriel starts a fire, no problem, and burns some of the broken wood in this room. And you guys are able to uh, hunker down for a rest. Are you gonna do a long rest here? Yeah, I think we should. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I think we should. We should set a watch, though, for sure. Yeah. Sure. All right. Who's going to take the first watch? I'll take the first one. Okay. Um, uh, second watch? I'll take second. I, okay. Uh, okay. I'll go last then. So okay. Mur Muriel will go third. And then Mara if, last. Yes. Yeah, if you have any spells left, you guys just want to heal someone just in case. Yeah. Yes, that's a, just that's in a good case idea. We run into <laughs> Who's in need of the healing? Yeah. Uh, I think, I think, I we, think, can think we can all everybody is, but are you saying you want you want a, a healing spell? Yeah, I I can give you a healing. I can give you a healing word. Oh right. wait, I used wait a minute, I used you mine. You used yours, I'd have to use mine. I yeah. I can Perfect. I can cure wounds as well. Oh, okay. Uh how many spells do you have left? I can cast I can cast four spells. Alright, she should do it. <laughs> I'll, I'll cast one on each of us. Uh yep, so this one will be on Mara. Eight. This one will be for Corbin. Nine. Uh, let's see. This one will be for Bjorn. Eleven. And she'll give herself one for good measure. Actually, uh, Bjorn, it was 15 for you and 16 for her. 15? Yeah. All right. 21. Okay, so she's back up to 21. So you guys all feel remarkably better at this point. And it's, and uh, yeah. So Bjorn, you're going to take the first watch. Why don't you go ahead and roll a perception check and a d20 for me? All right. Um, here's my perception. Turn advantage off. Perception. Okay. Oh. <laughs> it's been a rough day. I'm thinking about that. Yeah. I've been thinking about that armor that our, or, uh, Vladimir has, too. I'm just, like, sitting there trying to focus my watch, and I'm just like, I wonder if that armor was nice armor or not. You're uh, you're preoccupied with your thoughts. You you don't hear anything that sets you off. You hear a little bit of like scurrying, like rats maybe, but other than that, nothing that gets you, uh, nothing that makes you uncomfortably concerned. Uh, Corbin, why don't you go ahead and do the same? Perception. Yep, perception in a d20. A little better. Okay. Uh, very similar for you. Your watch goes relatively uninterrupted. Uh, Muriel will take her watch. So perception check. And a 
D20. Okay. Uh, she uh, listens intently and she, in between, like when you guys are changing over, I'll say this, Corbin, she does sort of, uh, as you wake her up, she talks to you a little bit and she says, I'll be leaving in the morning. All right. I appreciate what you've done for me. And well, I'm glad I was we... able to help you in your quest. My time glad. Has, has is running short and I must leave. All right. Where, where, where will you go? I will go to my people and I will tell them of your deeds and I will see if I can rally them to take back the night in Valakai and Berez. Excuse me, Valakai and Kresk. Berez is a shithole. I would never go back there. <laughs> but Kresk, but Kresk and Valakai. Far too damp. We will, I will try to rally my people. Well, thank you for your help. Of course. I sleep well. I will take this watch. Uh, and she does, and it goes uh, uh, relatively uneventfully. And then finally, Mara. She comes and wakes you up. It's your, it's your oh. watch. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Dave, can you uh, take that symbol off me too, please. Absolutely. Oh yeah, I wouldn't have mine on either. Okay. I can do that though. <clears throat> there we go. All right, yeah, so at morning comes and the four of you, well, Mara, you're up, but the other three start to, to wake and you can see that, um, what, you know, there's a little bit of food amongst you, I imagine, that you share around to uh to just provide a little bit of sustenance you are all you all gain the benefits of a long rest so you got your hit points and your spell slots back which is nice and you watch as as muriel starts to pack her things and she says i must leave i will try to rally my people to bring aid to your quest. I will tell them of what you've done. You are allies of Barovia, your champions. And then with that, she sort of, she kind of nods and, and kind of gives you the, you know, the nod. Uh, she doesn't reach out to shake hands or anything like that, but she gathers what little items she has and she lays them down in front of you. The gold, the, the uh, copper, the gem there's so there's 20 copper one silver nine gold and a gem worth 100 gold pieces she lays down the short sword a silver dagger and a longbow and she says you'll have more use for these than i will and with that she walks back out into you watch her as she walks out of the room back into the the graveyard And does anybody watch her as she walks away? I do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm staring at that gym, being a dwarf. I'm sure. Like, <laughs> so while you're watching the gym, Corbin and Mara, you watch out one of these windows in the stronghold as she walks across towards the mausoleum. And she stops for a minute in front of the mausoleum. And then, interestingly enough, you watch as she her body transforms as she shapeshifts herself. She shrinks in size and you watch as these plumes of feathers burst from her skin and she turns into a raven and she flaps her wings and she takes off and flies away from Argenvos Holt into the mists. And I look at Corbin. What? Did you see that? I did. See what? She turned into a crow. A raven. A raven, sorry. Yeah, there's a difference. And, and, and yeah, that was a raven for sure. 
Yeah, the misplaced tricks on your eyes. <laughs> on both Bjorn. our eyes? Yeah, Bjorn, if you stay with us long enough, you'll see more ravens than you'll, and they'll all be good. Hey, um, you were, you, you were, you were very, very, um, you were outstanding in battle, and I, I'd like my silver dagger back. I did loan it to her, but I'd like it back, yeah. but I think it would be okay if you took the rest of it, if that's all right, with, uh, Corbin. Do you have need of a bow? Firewood. Firewood. <laughs> I'll keep the bow. <laughs> All right, I'll take the dagger, you take the bow, and, and Bjorn, why don't you take the rest? Oh, you guys are too nice. Start well, we've, ar <laughs> we've already we've already split split yeah. the treasure and, and had given this away. So we it's it's yours now. I'm already stuffing my pockets before you guys can even <laughs> even make like think twice about it and just like just quickly going through it's like, Oh, you're too nice, just packing it up quick. <laughs> Just keeping an eye looking at this gem. What type of what type of gem is it? Um, it is a a very brilliant green gem. It's uh you would you would right. recognize it as an emerald. And it right. is worth a hundred gold pieces, give or take, with your uh, with your background. Could you drop what it was again, or could you read off what? Um, it's just gold it's a it's a gem uh, so a, a green gem worth 100 gold pieces and then you have 20 copper one silver and nine gold so perfect thank you the morning is yours what would you like to do well did you say that we all were leveling up or oh yeah yeah we'll we'll take care of that in a minute um Right. Okay, we're well, not gonna reason, we're not gonna run into any more combat or anything at this point. So, I just want to finish right. out tonight's session. So I want to know what you guys are gonna do. Okay. Um, well, uh, Corbin, what was what were the other things we needed to do? We needed to. Do you think we're ready for that Amber Temple business or? Well, I mean, so yeah, what do you think? I think it's what pretty is... much the the tasks that you were given before I came yeah. along, you know, now that you've helped me, you know, do all this for Argonvos, you know, I feel like I owe it to you well, to see through these other ones. And plus, you know, it'll help us in our quest to defeat Strahd. Did you guys uh, yeah. let me know about all the, the quests and tasks that you guys are, are doing? Yeah, Did we'll we be, go through that in our We should probably fill in Bjorn. Yeah, we probably should. <laughs> There's I, I, a lot. <laughs> I think we can trust him at this point. Yeah, I think so if, too. If you know some way to kill Strahd, I'm all for it. So, it's, um, so you share all the you share, Mara. You share all the information with uh, Bjorn in terms of Madam Eva and the the prophecies and the. The three relics, two of which you already have, and the third, which lies behind amber doors. Yeah, I think we are going to have to face that amber temple. That's that's. I'm 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 not looking forward to that. We need to be really ready for that, um, from what I understand. But we could maybe make our way towards that 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 direction and see what there is to see. The first I heard, a, a cleric afraid of a temple. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's that kind of temple anymore. Yeah, I don't. I don't think. I think this temple's gonna uh, test test uh, all of the spirits that we have with us. I look forward oh. to it. As he's kind of looking at his new great sword, like uh, definitely feels right. I would like to get some more more use out of this yet. Dave, this bow that I got was All basically right. Stan's bow, right? Correct. Yeah. So there's no arrows. There are no arrows. No. No arrows. Was there any, any of those? Still? Sorry, say that again. 
the the great sword that's not like silver or anything is it it is not all right was there any silvered weapons oh. in this this place you guys know of? well i mean do you, do you want to out of, out of character though a plus two sword is basically a magical weapon right it is magical yes absolutely yeah just oh, yeah, fyi uh, yep yeah i didn't think about that part a plus two great sword is like pretty sweet <laughs> yeah, it's badass. Yeah. Yeah, it's Bjorn, we've been we've pretty much been through here. Um the 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 sword that I have, uh the great sword that I have came from here and it, it doesn't seem to have any particular um extra to it. Um and silvered silvered anything has been very, very difficult to find, as you can imagine, in this land. Um, that's why I wanted my dagger back. I, I yeah. would not, I wouldn't recommend taking a look through this castle any further. Uh, we've been here before, and it's um, got really big spiders. I mean, really big. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and we've, and we've, would... exam we've examined it pretty thoroughly. Yeah, I think yeah, right. it'd be great well, to guys... find some arrows for this bow, but I don't really want to look around here too much. Um, and we've we've got a horse in theory. We've got a horse and cart out front. That'll help us make some time if it's still if if it's still out there. You guys uh, ready to head to the the temple then? Sure. Oh. Well, we uh, yeah we might need to figure out where it is. I don't know if we know where we're going, yeah. right? Um, actually, no, I've, I've got a map. Yeah, I'm I've I've got a map. Hold on a second. I, I start I started to draw myself a map at the beginning of all this. I just need to find it somewhere in my bag. I'm digging around my bag. You're you're hearing me dig around the bag. Oh, and I've got that. Oh, that's right. I've got that that book. Yeah. That book. Of, Did you have uh, that tome of, that you could look at? The tome the tome of Strahd. Yeah, that's right. I've got that. Um hold on a minute. And you would need to go over that during a rest, right? <laughs> Yeah, I would. I would. I would. Oh, yeah, Holy that, that tome. With all the answers. <laughs> like, <laughs> giant, giant oh, yeah. One of the main three quest items we're supposed to find. Oh, yeah, I forgot about oh, that. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, that that's fine. So... I just I think it's funny because that, that happens in D&D &D all the time. It's like, oh. Oh, yeah, you've got this really magical sword, and I have this really magical book. Um yeah, maybe I'll take a look at that tonight around the campfire. <laughs> I think that's yeah. probably a good idea. Yeah. Um, so, uh, all right. Uh, Barovia, Balakai, Kresk, Winery, Argonvolst, Dark Forest, Amber Temple. Okay, there we go. I think it's south of us. Is Pretty there sure a road it's south. heading south? I don't know. Are. I think there is. We'd have to like go back to that cross. I mean, Berez was to the south, though. Yeah, it was, but it's it's west of Berez from the description oh. that I the, from the description I, that I got, and I and I, I hope that I got the right description, or that I I should say more accurately, I hope I recorded that description, um, so we can probably start heading in that direction and if we hopefully come across some friendlies uh we might be able to get some information all right uh which which way should we take to get out of here do you want to go back out the back door do you want to go through the front yeah door? let's no let's not go through the front because that's where the the spiders are right up in the front of the building remember yeah they were a little to the south of us but yeah no let's 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 go okay. out around. Let's not let's not uh, attempt to eat here. Okay. We'll go back out the way we came in. Yeah, easy enough. So the the three of you make your way back out into the cemetery, wrap your yourselves around, moving up north of the stronghold, getting yourselves back to the main road. Again, it's snowy. Uh, there's there's a little bit of a wind blowing the snowdrifts around, and as you make your way back to where your your cart and horse were left you do not see them however they're gone. yeah they're gone however parked 
on the road is a large black carriage drawn oh. by two large black horses. The horses snort puffs of steamy breath into the chill air. Oh, boy. And you watch oh, no. as the side door to the cart swings no. open. No. 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 You look inside from your position and it's empty. The satin, the beautiful satin upholstery of the seats inside beckoning to you. And you see, you can just barely see uh, sitting on the, uh, laying on the, on the satin is a letter, an envelope. Oh. I'll pick it up. You <laughs> walk. <laughs> I'll walk right up. I'll like, hey. I'll just shake my head at the door. Bjorn, Bjorn walks. Bjorn walks up to the, and up to the the wagon and takes the letter. It says, "My friends, know that it is I, who have brought you to this land, my home, and know that I alone can release you from it. I bid you dine at my castle so that we can meet in civilized surroundings." Your passage here will be safe one. I await your arrival. Your host, Strad von Zarovich. And that is where we're going to end tonight's session. <laughs> oh. It's just a little dinner party I you've been know. invited to. Yeah. No, no big deal. Will we be on the menu? I guess we'll find out. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Nice job, guys. You finished the the quest of Argonvost. Nice. That's awesome. That's huge. I know. You guys are getting First some things thing. done. I was getting a little freaked out back there in the cemetery. It only it only cost you two party members to get it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, I'm like, I have 77 health and I take half damage. It's like, holy shit, when are you guys going to freaking... Heal me up. <laughs> well, it's like still going we had, down. We had to be conservative. You have to like, you can't hold. Yeah. You got to wait. That's well, the thing. The, you also have to ask for it if you need it. You have to communicate with yeah. your team. You know, you can't just assume they're going to help you out. Like, I knew you were a beefy, but I had no idea like how low you were getting. Yeah. Nobody can no, see your hit yeah, points yeah. but you. And that's, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, that's the no. way the game is designed. You're not supposed to be able to see how, how much hit points people have left. So just, just, you know, you can use free actions yeah. to communicate with your party. Let them know like, you Hey, I'm about to die. Yeah. I knew I was, I was just like, no, I was talking about like Corbin. Uh, he was about to attack someone else. I was like, Oh no, bring me back up. <laughs> Why no, I kind yeah. of multi. Yeah. He did though. That's all. Yeah. It's like, because if I, I healed you and then I moved back down so that you could have advantage. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. I was like, that's pretty sweet. I was like, finally, we're, we're, I think we're starting to play into each other's strengths. Mm -hmm. No, I was just laughing because I was like, man, I took a lot of a lot of damage. <laughs> for. Uh, yeah, that was well, that's what barbarians are good for. <laughs> I know. That's all I was like, yep. I, that's what I made was literally a meat shield. And I was like, hey, well, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Definitely happened yep. this time. You guys all yeah, took a lot of damage. Up. You guys yeah, all, that was a good fight. That was a good challenge for you yeah. guys. I was, I got down into the, well, I didn't get as low as you guys. I got down into the teens, but mm -hmm. it's still freaky once you get down. Dave's still like, challenge accepted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, mm -hmm, I got you a little bit Well, more. you, you <laughs> were smart and cast that protection from evil and good. That's a great spell. I helped you I also, out a lot. You would have taken a lot yes, of damage yeah. if you didn't have that. I feel like you were rolling much better tonight than you were last, last time. Last yeah. Time. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. You got three, like, three natural twenties. I got too, though. even, I think even with only... disadvantage. I got hit several times. I rolled a few natural twenties myself as well. I'm looking yeah. at this one. Let's see, two, three, four. I rolled a lot. Yeah, I rolled much better tonight than I did last time for sure. Yeah. I you you rolled better than I did. I had three natural twenties. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So so Dave, one of the reasons why I was asking about the level change mm -hmm. was because I wanted to um, adjust some of my. Yeah, spells. you can go ahead and do that. So uh, just go ahead and okay. and level up. Um, 
you know, when you have chance before the next session. And okay. go, Mara, go ahead and modify your uh, your your spells just like you normally would when you when you okay. do a rest. So um, okay, I know Bjorn, you're one level and behind everybody else, but that's okay. Yeah, um, because of the what the, what level are you, is he at? He's one level behind you Go guys. On. Well, I'm so at yeah, I just... I'm at seven, but yeah, um, I'm at seven. Mara also. said she was. Oh, you're at seven too. Okay, I thought you said you were at six uh -huh. earlier. No, no, oh, okay. no. Dave okay. said we were at. Yeah, no, I okay. was wrong. You and guys, was not you guys are leveling to eight, and <laughs> Bjorn is leveling to yeah. seven. I got nervous there for a second because I just clicked it. I was like, wait, because I was level six. Mm -hmm. I was like, I swear. Well, that's what happens when you die. Six, you lose. You lose a level. <laughs> no, so, I'm Dave, um, or or one of you guys, can you explain this? You said we we got this. You said a bump. Is that what you called it? A buff. Uh, the buff, yeah. The for, buff. Can, mm -hmm. you explain, can you explain that to me? You have a plus one to your armor class and a plus right. one to your saving throws. Right. I I I know that, but okay. like is a, is a buff just something that, that the DM gives at discretion or mm -hmm. no, it's it's absolutely. like because the it's absolutely like, yeah. the something the DM can can giveth and taketh away. <laughs> well, absolutely the, in, in that's the beauty that's because, the beauty of being the dm yeah and yeah. it's the result of I, you I, yeah I don't understand it, yeah it's a result all. of you relighting the beacon yeah okay yep okay so you not only did you gain a level because you relit the beacon but you also gain this buff from having the light of this essentially it's like the hope of the beacon's light shining in the valley that gives you a benefit especially against like the minions of Strahd. So, um, Dave, we have to like add that manually to the, like, like the backside of the character sheet, right? Uh, yeah, there's no, is there a way to add a plus one to your AC? Uh... You can just manually type it in. Let's if see. You, you can do it, click on you... your AC. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can. Yeah. You can manually, you can do the plus one in the, in the saves, like I could do all that. You can the... do, uh, let's see. I just created an item and I just said, um, that's a good way to do it. All right. I, I just act like a, I, that way is a item. And that way, when you take is it, away, is it, it uh, is it a plus one to death saves? Um, a, hmm. a plus one to death saves too. So it add the saving throw to as an item. Is that what you said, uh, Ben? No, I think he's saying that for AC, for the armor class. But on, yep. if you go to the gear icon on your spell sheet, you know? It does apply to death saves as well. All right. Um, so there's a death save the modifier in, the, in your character sheets. Yep, Corbin, you just added it. Uh, there yeah. is a global saving throw modifier that you can add to. You add a plus one to that too. The yeah. Global. Sure. Yeah. On, you on have top of all the ones. <clears throat> well, did you just add one to everything? Yeah. No, then you would not do that. Okay. Then I'll leave that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I and think then the plus, oh, plus armor I, class. I it is. And then armor class. Oh, where is that? Can capacity global matter. Armor class tracking. I don't know what that is. You do custom. If you could, if you do custom, you could do. You would have to figure it out on your own. It might be just. Um, we just keep it in mind. I don't know. No. Um, oh, you can just change yeah, just just change it, just change it, just change it manually okay. in your armor class. Just add one to the armor yep. class. I didn't know you could just change that number at will. Sweet. 
All right. Well, uh, let's do this. Let's all wave goodbye to anybody who's going to be watching this in the future if, besides us, if anybody does. Bye. Thanks for, Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. Bye. We're leveling up, and that's probably not as interesting, but we did <laughs> we did finish the quest for the Argonvost, so we got I, that. I feel so good that we actually accomplished a quest. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. We're making yeah. progress, baby. All right, see ya. Bye. Bye.